When you ask people how to get better at something, people usually say things like, just keep working hard and invest a lot of time into it because eventually you'll become a master at it. That is a true statement, but sometimes you want a better understanding on how to do that. I would like to give you a better understanding by telling you the story on how I started off as an elementary kid drawing on pieces of paper with colored pencils and crayons, to now drawing with digital tablets and working on animations. The best place for this story to begin is back in my elementary years. That was a very long time ago. Things were very different back then. And to be honest, I kind of feel sad for those who never will be able to experience that kind of lifestyle back then. It wasn't perfect, but it was way better than today's society. Now, it would take too long for me to explain the differences between the two eras, so that's a story for another time. Let's just continue with this one. To be honest, I don't know exactly when I started to draw, but ever since that day, I always enjoyed creating art. In my early artistic years, many of my drawings consisted of Crayola crayons, and I would draw Pokemon, Killer Whales, Batman, Spider-Man, but the main primary thing I really enjoyed to draw was Star Wars. These were a lot of cool things I loved to draw, but as time went on, lots of these things started to fade away. Star Wars, Killer Whales, and my faith in God and drawing lots of those kind of things have not faded. If you remember the just keep working hard quote from earlier, then you can imagine I got really good at drawing these main three themes. And during this time, Star Wars, the prequel trilogy, started being released in theaters. The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith came out during my elementary years. Ever since I watched them, I was amazed by the stunning graphics, armor, vehicles, and battles. As a result, I began to draw prequel era artwork. What I mainly drew were the battle scenes. I have drawn so many battlefields, from forest moons, desert planets, grassy plains, shorelines, and even in outer space. Then once I had finished the battlefield, I would start drawing in the soldiers, vehicles, and whatnot. It was fun to create a cool battle scene in my head and then draw it out to show my family. There were so many possibilities. That is, until I hit an invisible wall when I was in middle school. The 2008 Clone Wars had just aired, and I was super excited. It looked so great that I wanted to draw a whole bunch of Clone Wars battle scenes. And in such cases, I liked to draw battle scenes on big pieces of paper. Not computer-sized paper, I'm talking about the huge, big pieces of paper. So usually, a battle scene would take me about a week or more to finish, depending if it was super detailed. I drew so many major scenes, like the Battle of Teth, Christophsis, Belusia, and even inside the hangar area of a Venator-class cruiser. But let's get back to where I said I hit an invisible wall. It happened when I was drawing a Battle of Christophsis scene. I drew all the streets down, I drew the buildings, and I was about to draw all the clones and battle droids. But once I started drawing the clones, I realized something. I did not have a single design for any of the clones. All I end up drawing were a bunch of shinies and lots of the ranked clones. For those of you who don't know, when Attack of the Clones came out, the clones with the paint markings represented their command status. The clones with the green markings were sergeants, blue were lieutenants, red were captains, and yellow were generals or commanders. And I will say, after I finished my Battle of Christophsis scene with all the shinies and all those other clones, I was not pleased with that art piece at all. From that point on, I decided to work on some clone trooper armor designs. At first, I just started off with the helmets, but eventually I started adding the torso and the shoulders. Many of these drawings were done in my middle school art class, and my teacher noticed my work. She saw that I would finish an art piece that she'd given to us, and with my free time, I would draw the clones. Each piece of paper had six clone troopers drawn on them, and with excellent detail, I might add. My teacher was so impressed that she decided to give me extra credit for working on them. When my classmates saw this, they tried to earn that ability as well. But my teacher told them that their art would count as extra credit if they were as well detailed as mine. They gave up because they were hoping to get some free extra credit for mediocre work. If their art piece was done with great detail, then obviously she would give them the extra credit. 
Although I was doing well in creating and recreating official Star Wars designs, I soon hit another invisible wall. What happened, you may ask? I started to run out of ideas for new designs. That surprised me since I had not even drawn a hundred helmets yet at that point. This was a problem that had to be solved, and at first, I didn't know what to do to overcome the situation. A puzzle to be sure, but the answer had to be simple. Then, the idea came. I thought, what if I would ask a few of my classmates on what designs they would want on their own personal clone trooper armor? What a great idea! So I decided to take that idea and put it into action. I just walked up to one of my classmates and said, Hey, I know you're not a Star Wars fan, but I was wondering, if you had your own clone trooper armor and you wanted your own design on the armor, what would it look like? For the first few days, I would ask a handful of my classmates this question, and I received pretty cool ideas. Now, my original plan was to just get a few new ideas so I could think of more unique designs on my own again. And I can happily say it worked. Well, maybe it worked a little too well. Because soon after, just about every single person in my grade, even high school students and teachers, wanted me to draw clone tripper designs for them. What a shocking turn of events. The requests kept coming in all the way from my middle school years all the way to my graduation day in high school. And as a result, my major battle scene drawings were put on hold. Or more accurately, they were never to be drawn again. One of my major battle scenes is still not done to this day. After graduating high school, I went to college. I had plenty of new ideas to draw my own clone trooper designs at this point, so I just kept drawing more of them. Now, if you thought that my college mates would want me to draw them some clone trooper designs too, well... You would be right. <laughs> the requests never stopped in both college and even at my job. Seriously, I have drawings for some of my fellow employees and even some managers and even some bosses. And now that I think of it, I have never had anyone I drew a clone tripper helmet for ever complain. Every single one of them loved the design I made for them. So now you know how I got to drawing clone tripper designs, but you're probably wondering how I got to making a YouTube channel. I can say I really enjoyed watching YouTube videos starting all the way back from my middle school years. Now, if you would have told me that I was gonna make my own YouTube channel back then, I would have told you that you were crazy. Why, you may ask? It was because during that time, I did not have a lot of confidence in myself. Not in the slightest. It never occurred to me that I could even make a channel. I thought it was just for skilled, popular people, in which I was neither of those things. Even though I have gained more skills since then, I still don't consider myself as a popular person. So what made me start to think about becoming a YouTuber? What made me start to think that I could even become a YouTuber was when I saw people making LEGO review and stop motion videos. Eventually, I made my own channel based off of LEGO Star Wars sets, both official sets and my own creations. Some people call those MOCs, or mocks. For a while, things were going well, but after a few years, I started to lose motivation. My channel got a good amount of subscribers, but then it stopped there and never increased beyond that point. It didn't matter if I spent my entire weekend making one video. The only results I got were 10 views and 3 likes, if I was lucky. During that time, what I thought was, what's the point? I am just wasting my weekends for practically nothing. I thought about quitting. However, during my first YouTube channel's years, I had been watching some YouTube animators, such as Jaden Animations, The Odd Ones Out, Wolfie Chu, Sugar, Let Me Explain Studios, and many others. Their videos were so fun to watch since they combined their artistic talent with telling stories. The more I watched their videos, the more I wanted to make videos like theirs. But I had a dilemma. I had no idea how they made those videos. Drawing tablets and household microphones were unheard of to me. Not a single one of my art classes had ever told me that these existed. It was until some of these YouTube animators started making videos on how they made their videos. 
After a while of building my confidence, I decided to take a risk and buy a Wacom tablet and a Blue Yeti. Another thing I decided to do was to make a whole new channel. Though I could have had hundreds of subscribers right off the bat, I thought that would have been a really bad idea. Mainly because I wanted to see if people would actually subscribe to my channel because of my digital art and stories. At first, my new channel was difficult. For a while, I did not even have a YouTube name for it. Not to mention, I was getting so stressed out on learning how to draw on a Wacom tablet. And editing my audio was a headache for me. Partially still is, actually. With all of those factors in mind, I thought about quitting again. But my self-confidence was a lot stronger this time, so I decided not to quit. Now I am here with all of you, with more subscribers than my first channel had ever had. Now this begs the question, what's next? I started off as an elementary boy, drawing with colored pencils and crayons. Now I'm drawing with a digital tablet and working on animations. I never thought I'd be doing this. But life is full of mysteries, isn't it? Since I'm here now, I should try to think of what could happen in the future. Perhaps I could actually work for a real, legit film industry. Maybe I could be a concept artist? A designer? Many of my friends say I could be really good at voice acting. I don't know, there's so many things I would love to do in the film industry. One thing's for sure, I do not want to be in Hollywood or anything like that. For my personal preference, I want to be in a film industry that honors and serves God. The one true God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. There's God the Father and the Holy Spirit. The three in one. He's the one who gave me all these gifts, and he's the one who's been providing the opportunities. So I'm going to trust him with everything I got. I trust him with my life. I want to end this story with a thanks to all of you for your support. If I had not received such great feedback and support from you all, I probably would have given up YouTube altogether. What my journey has taught me is to do what I love and share it with others. And I guess the best advice I can give you right now is that you may not end up doing whatever you started out doing, but you can still enjoy the new thing that you're doing now. There will be times you want to give up, but I want to let you know that you're not alone. Many people want to call it quits on their dreams. Very few accomplish them. Hopefully after hearing this story, you will want to be one of those who achieve their goals. Have a wonderful day, and may God bless you. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one and more. And always remember that you are more than welcome to leave a comment and leave a like on this video. Farewell, my friends, and I hope to hear from you all soon.